Hello and welcome to a very special episode of Fishing Discoveries. I'm Paul Gaskell and I'm super excited because I finally got my hands on the author's proof copy of my book, The Fly Fishing Bible of Nymphing. As you can see, it is the not for resale uh, author's proof copy. And while I obviously want to highlight the existence of the book, what I mainly want to focus on for this episode is the quality and the quantity of the video material, the free supporting media that goes along with this book. Now, this is of the standard, and you know, I can say this hand on heart, of the sort of stuff that we've previously and will in future release as premium paid content, whether that's on DVD or as part of a streaming or membership site. But to give you a flavour of the sort of stuff that we've put together, I want to look at one of the first features, which is the spotlight on indicators. This is a 45 minute feature and it covers pretty broad spectrum of the indicators and sighting materials that are used in modern nymphing. And that includes some of the more unusual ways that you can apply dry flies as indicators, whether that's on the water or more unusually held off the water, kind of in the style of a yarn indicator that you might see in some other forms of fishing around the world. Now, because I want to give you a flavour of the fishing that's actually included within the premium content, I'm going to give you a little treat now. And there's an example of using the dry fly in the Italian Dolomites, tackling some of the shy and very beautiful wild trout up there. Some wonderful memories of uh, fishing and friends in the Italian Dolomites there. And of course, this is just one style of indicator that's just been cherry picked out of the, the whole range that we cover in the video. In fact, every single indicator style that features in the book also has a starring role within the Spotlight on Indicators video content as well. And of course, those bonuses don't stop there. There's also John Pearson's fantastic demonstration, step by step, creating his world famous French leaders. And when it comes to making these, it's not all about the recipe. Of course, that's important. And that's one of the things that you get within the book. But what's crucial to success is how well you're able to construct these, whether it's the material or more importantly still than that, the way that you form each of the individual knots. Now, John's masterclass in this respect takes a good 45 minutes to go through. But what I wanted to share with you with this episode is, I think, the best demonstration of a blood knot that I've ever seen on any video site. In fact, I'll be very keen to hear if anybody else has seen a better demo than this. So let's have a look now at John plying his craft and making the perfect blood knot. We're going to be taking a look at how to tie one of my French leaders. But before we do that, we need to take a look at how you tie a blood knot. There are plenty of diagrams on how to do that, but a lot of them don't give you those fine details on how to get the knot tight and looking as perfectly as the knots do on one of my French leaders. So I've got some handy props here. Don't worry, there's not going to be any sort of bondage involved or anything like that. But this stuff uh, is 10 mil bungee cord. You don't need it for a French leader. This is just so I can show you uh, the mechanics of a blood knot and it's not so much that you need to learn the blood knot itself from this the diagrams are good for learning what goes where what this lets you learn is how to tighten the blood knot and how to get that nice finish where it's, it looks like the coils were almost grown in a lab or something so we start off by crossing over the two pieces there's a tag end up there and a tag end up there so the tag ends go off both above like that it's not like you cross one down and one up they both go pointing up and the first one I turn is my left hand I'll do four turns while pinching the two pieces together with my right hand so that's, that's two three 
and four. So we've got four turns. Now in the diagrams, they just take that and put it through the gap there and you see this, a nice sort of line of uh, twists and then the tag end goes back through. If you do it like that, when it comes to tighten up your knot, you'll end up with big and small turns sort of mixed together and you'll not get it to tighten down evenly. So the key to getting a really neat blood knot, what we want to do is we want to be between these two where it crosses with the first one. At the end, you'll see where this becomes like a little needle eye that you've got to thread through. But for this one, instead of just putting it there, like in the diagrams, what we're going to do is we're going to bend that slightly and then put it through and then pinch it. So that is gone between these two uh, pieces there. It's quite confusing to explain, let alone do it. <laughs> so at this point then, if I pull that back, what happens is this twists around and you get your coils. As well as going up, they come back down. So it starts to look less like the diagram, but this is actually practically how they, they tighten up better. So now that that's going through, we pull that around and back and then we grip that. And this leaves this hand free to do some work and this is all nicely sort of tied off and ready to go. So then this side does the same things. It wraps around four times. So one, two, it's not as easy with giant bungee cord. I need giant hands to match. Three and four. And then we've got that little needle eye there now. This is poking out that way. So this needs to poke out that way. And again, if you were to do it like in the diagram, when it comes to tightening up, you've got this huge bit of slack. So what you need to do is when you push it through, you need to bend, then grab that. When you pull back, you'll see kind of tightens down like getting the coils to pass over the self again at this point you can give the tag ends a bit of a pull but what you don't want to do is pull the knot tight using the tag ends you just get the tag ends and take out any slack so what you get then is you get everything wrapped over itself that's now ready to tighten and as you can see that looks not a lot like the diagrams of blood knots that you get um, it's a little bit more complex and i can imagine why because in the writing of the book, Paul's had to make some diagrams for blood knots, and it's not an easy diagram to construct. And I dread to think what it'd be like trying to recreate this knot. <laughs> so the next thing to do is lubricate your knot. That is really important. Everybody knows to wet your knot with a bit of saliva. This one, you really want it so you can almost can't see the knot for saliva. It wants a lot of saliva on, because there's a hell of a lot going on there and it needs some good lubrication if you're expecting to pull it tight and have each end have a nice straight line coming out and not have pigtails. So we'll grab and pull. Now here's where it gets complicated. This bungee cord will not tighten up into a nice neat blood knot. So this is where I'm gonna leave it and we're actually gonna transfer onto regular monofilament line and do a proper blood knot in practice. Fantastic piece of instruction there uh, from John. And of course, that's just the opening five minutes of that whole spotlight sequence, which it walks you through from start to finish uh, the whole process of creating John's unbelievably high quality French leaders. And that's everything from the knots, the materials, all the way through to the chemical treatment, literally everything you need to know. So that's definitely something not to be missed. And of course the bonuses don't stop there. We've also created a spotlight on the ladder leader concept uh, that we've put a little bit of material out before but um, it's not especially familiar to most people so just to get everybody on the same page here's a little taster and an explainer video just to give you a clue as what the ladder leader actually entails. When using the ladder leader six inch pre-tied droppers can be made in advance. These droppers are attached using hitch knots and are kept in place by figure eight knots in the ladder leader itself. A pre-made ladder leader with figure eight knots regularly spaced between six and say 10 inches allows continuous variation of the spacing of the nymphs without the need to retie. The end of the ladder leader is actually formed using a pre-tied six inch dropper. This is attached using the same hitch knot as the regular droppers this time to a final figure eight stopper knot at the end of the ladder leader. 
The ability to quickly change spacing and depth of nymphs without the need for a complete re-rig means most anglers are much more likely to make these changes and therefore pick up extra fish. Now that we know roughly what we're talking about with the ladder leader concept, uh, I can fill you in on uh, the, the details that are in the book. Obviously, they go through different versions of the ladder leader. And the video bonus content, it picks up on the creation of both the robust short line nymphing style of leader, but also creating the more finesse versions for longer range styles of nymphing as well. And also within that, it tells you how to be able to adjust the spacing of your flies. It's not just about the depth that your flies are fishing at. It's about that teamwork between the different patterns that you've got on the same leader. And being able to adjust the spacing between them quickly is a really key advantage of this system. In fact, in the time that it's taken me to explain that, uh, you pretty much could have either adjusted the spacing of your flies or even changed them out completely and swapped them for different patterns. So as well as that kind of, you know, the technical abilities to be able to do that, it also goes through some of the uh, special storage solutions that we've come up with, the quick release system that we use, uh, and just having and making these kind of pre-rigged uh, droppers and the knots that are used to create those. You get a great step-by-step -step walkthrough from both myself and John of the complete system of creating, storing, and then using the ladder leader. And of course, it includes lots of fish porn, great fish catches on stream, the, the evidence that we've got from the field trials whilst uh, developing that system. So that's something definitely to look forward to and to check out in uh, both the book and particularly in the Spotlight on the Ladder Leader video content that supports this publication. Speaking of that publication, jumping back to uh, the book itself, uh, it's broken down into three sections and it covers lots of things from personal experiences, stories, uh, the ability to look inside the fly boxes of World Championship competitors, um, as well as kind of my own sort of uh, nymphing background and the ways that I've arrived at certain theories and certain practices. But not only that, it's very, very heavy on the coaching. And in fact, the whole focus of the book is to improve your nymphing. Um, so whether it's uh, Czech, Polish, uh, French nymphing, uh, Nymphophile, uh, a variation of French nymphing, Pesha la Sempe, Slovakian nymphing, trio, duo, uh, fishing streamers on a French leader, dry fly on a French leader. All of those tactics, they're all covered in great detail within the book um, and they're explained in a kind of a coaching fashion. And it builds up, I try and layer the information so that you get simple um, cherry pickable concepts that you can just pick up and use right out of the box. But as you go through the book, the book, sorry, it progressively layers uh, on top of the previous information. So all of a sudden you realize sort of almost by inception style uh, learning, you've kind of absorbed these extra techniques and tactics. Then most importantly of all, the third section of the book, which is about evolving and adapting. This is what gives you not only the how of the tactics, but it layers in the why, the when, the where, so that it creates an actual fishing system that you can pick up and use for yourself. And that's absolutely critical to the success of the book, in my view. It even includes my sort of magic bullet uh, method for reading the water, which is basically a, 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 an ecology cheats version version. So it's a very, very simplified uh, way of actually reading the water. But what it tells you is not only the tactics to use and where to use them, but it guides you on fly selection as well. And that is all based around uh, the way that food sort of enters into the streams, but it's also a little bit based on the oxygen, the dissolved oxygen requirement for different beasties at different times of the year. Now that sounds complicated, but basically what it boils down to is 
knowing the season and then also the pace and depth of the water. And using those two variables, it takes a lot of guesswork out of the whole system. Uh, and then rounding up at the end of the book, there's a simplified selection of flies. We're not going to overwhelm you with um, different fly patterns, but we give you the recipes for those as well. Of course, the whole book's littered with, with multiple fly patterns, as I say, from all different world championship competitors and different interesting characters that we've all come across within our sort of you know extended family of uh, fishing nuts that we're, we're in contact with. But the, the selection that we advise, it takes a lot of that overwhelming detail out of the equation. So this is really the reason I've named it the Nymphing Bible and a, a complete playbook um, for nymphing is it, it really aims to give you something that just isn't out there at the moment in any other format. The collation of the information and then combining that into a system is, I think, what is really unique about that. So as well as the, as I say, the, the um, video content alone that's worth you know, the, the price of entry, uh, do go ahead and if you're interested in nymphing at all, click through on the link and order yourself a copy. Uh, we'll ship it out to you as, as fast as we're physically able to. And while you're waiting for that to arrive, you can obviously sit back and enjoy the video content itself. So thanks for joining me on this episode and uh, I look forward to all your questions and comments uh, and I'll also catch you on the next one. But hopefully before then, you've clicked through and you've ordered your copy of the Fly Fishing Bible of Nymphing.